Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and Game of Thrones season has officially arrived with a trailer set in the crypts of Winterfell that is filled with symbolism and hidden meaning. And hey, it's longer than a few seconds like the last two promos were. What am I gonna do with all this time? A whole 90 seconds times 24 frames per second? That's like 40 million still images. Not really a numbers guy. Let's break down this cryptic trailer for all the details that you might have missed and spoiler warning in case any of my predictions end up being right and they ruin your life. Let's get started. Okay, so this promo appears to be shot purely for marketing purposes. Like, I kind of doubt this footage will appear exactly as is in any of the episodes in season eight. The past few seasons have actually built up hype in a similar way, with creepy, symbolic promos with the actors. This Crips of Winterfell promo echoes both the Long Walk promo for season seven and the Hall of Faces promo for season six, the heroes walking their destined paths, but the destination being death. All men must die, even if it won't necessarily be these exact characters in this season. The only real confirmed footage that we've seen so far are the brief clips of Jon, Sansa, and Daenerys and the others greeting each other at Winterfell, which will take place in the season 8 premiere. That episode will reportedly be filled with callbacks to the Game of Thrones pilot episode, and already we're seeing one major callback here. The grave of Lyanna Stark and the feather in the hand of the statue. That feather was placed there by King Robert Baratheon in the very first episode, when he visited Lyanna's grave in the crypts and growled about his lingering rage toward the Targaryens for, as he and we all believed, the Crown Prince Rhaegar Targaryen kidnapping, raping, and killing Lyanna. Robert told Ned Stark that when he and Lyanna were betrothed, he would bring her exotic tropical birds because they were her favorite, and this feather was meant as a token of those memories. Later in season five, Sansa would find this feather on the floor and place it back in the statue's hand, repeating this myth about her aunt's fate. How many tens of thousands had to die because Rhaegar chose your aunt? Yes, he chose her, and then he kidnapped her and raped her. But if you're thinking about this, really the more appropriate token to leave on Lyanna Stark's tomb would be a blue winter rose, the flowers that Rhaegar gave Lyanna at the tourney of Harrenhal. Because in reality, their love was true and consensual. Robert's feather was likely a gift she wouldn't really be all that interested in. John's passing by like, me mom didn't want your feather. And as John passes this statue, we hear her dying wish to her brother from the Tower of Joy flashback in season six. You have to protect him. And notice how John turns, as if he heard this whisper from his mother. The blocking here is almost exactly the same move Ned Stark made in that Tower of Joy scene, the moment Bran called out to him, and young Ned almost seemed to hear him. I'll get more into this possible connection between John and Ned later, but for now, let's move on. Oh, this horror that's come to my family. It's all because I couldn't love a motherless child. Okay, in this section, Sansa Stark walks past the statue of her mother, Catelyn Stark. We hear Catelyn's voice from an episode in season three, when she confessed to Talisa that she actually prayed for Jon Snow to die. Oh, this horror that's come to my family. It's all because I couldn't love a motherless child. She talks about how when baby John came down with the pox, Catelyn felt horrible for wishing him dead. So she prayed again to the gods, this time to spare the boy, promising to treat him like a son and demand Ned give the bastard the Stark family name. But even when the boy was spared, she never kept her promise. And she fears that all the tragedies that have befallen the Stark family started with the curse that she brought upon them. But while the gods may have played a role in the Stark's destinies, it might not be the curse that Catelyn feared. Like really, these sad events needed to happen for Jon to ascend to his current position. King of the North, partner to Daenerys. Also, while we're looking at that moment, I think it's worth pointing out the exact words Catelyn used to describe baby Jon's close call with death. Mr. Lewin said if he made it through the night, he'd live. But it would be a very long night. Ah, the Long Night is the name given to the last severe winter in Westeros that lasted an entire generation. This was 8,000 years before the present day. It was the first time the White Walkers descended upon Westeros. And it looks as though we're in store for a second Long Night in this final season, which we can assume will lead to another close call with death for Jon. Perhaps the events of season eight could span an entire generation as well. Like we could see a time jump to an older Jon and older versions of the rest of the surviving characters after a lifetime of resisting against the White Walkers. We'll see another possible clue pointing to this later on, so let's move on to the next clip. You are a Stark. You might not have my name, but you have my blood.
Okay, one more past quote here. This one from Eddard Stark, taken from his final moment with Jon Snow in season one. And you are a Stark. You might not have my name, but you have my blood. The next time we see each other, We'll talk about your mother. So yeah, all of these past quotes are about John, the key elements of his life. His birth, when Ned Stark lied about his lineage to protect him, but also dooming him to the position of a bastard. And his many close calls with death. We're reminded how, as a baby, the gods spared him as they will do again and again throughout his life. And of course, the secret of his royal lineage. Clearly, John's whole life journey will be very important to this final season. And it looks like it could cause some tension between him and Sansa and Arya. The man who was once their half-brother will now be revealed as a cousin in a Targaryen and an auntie. And rewatching these past clips, I'm getting a little nervous that that conflict between these characters could have actually been foreshadowed. John left you in charge. He did. I hope he comes back soon. I remember how happy he was to see me when he sees you. His heart will probably stop. <laughs> Ooh, maybe she's thinking on some level that she might end up stopping that heart by sticking him with the pointy end. Huh? Next clip. Okay, so here we see the three Starks' destination, their own graves. Arya sees her own tomb statue, Sansa her own, and Jon his. Woof. Apparently, it was done by the same sculptor who did that Lucille Ball statue. Sure, this statue does make Jon look a lot older than he currently is, compared to Sansa and Arya's statues, which pretty closely reflect their current appearances. This could be because statues of Stark men tend to make them look older, wiser, more kingly, whereas statues of Stark women that we've seen tend to look younger, fairer, succumbing to tragically premature deaths, like with Lyanna. Also, it's just not easy to sculpt facial hair. It always looks like they're wearing fake beards or, you know, those knit caps that go over your face. But if this is depicting an older John, that could be more evidence of that time jump theory. Like maybe John will die in season eight, but as an old man after a long life of battling White Walkers in the second long night. But really, we should remember, as far as this promo goes, I think this is all meant to just be chilling imagery, hinting at the end of all these characters' narratives and their perennial proximity to death the way that the Hall of Faces promo did. But let's move on to this final clip. Okay, the three Starks face an oncoming freeze from the White Walkers. John unsheaths Longclaw, the Valyrian steel sword given to him by Giro Mormont. Arya pulls out Needle, the sword given to her by John in season one. Now that sword probably wouldn't be very useful against the White Walkers, but notice how you can also make out the dagger hanging from Arya's other side. This is a Valyrian steel dagger that belonged to Littlefinger. It was used to attempt to murder Bran by the cutthroat, and Arya ended up using it to execute Littlefinger. This weapon will probably end up saving Arya's life. The image of Robert's feather to Lyanna freezing over isn't just powerful to show the impending danger facing Winterfell. After breaking through the wall, the Night King and the White Walker army really just have Last Hearth and then Winterfell's next on their death march. This image here suggests the myth that inspired Robert's rebellion and the wars of the past are really being shattered by a new, more important truth. Also, the image of this lone feather being taken over by Frost reminds me a lot of that earlier teaser promo for season eight with the board map of Dragonstone. A similar icy mist spread across that table with the Stark wolf freezing over just like the feather does. It's a visual depiction of the words Sansa quoted from her father. The lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. It's on, on the shirt. Here, the three Starks unified as a pack are able to barely fend off the looming cold. But this leaves us with a big question because not all the Starks are present here. Why doesn't Bran join them? Well, for one, Bran doesn't really identify as a Stark anymore. Since becoming a three-eyed raven, his perspective has really shifted above the politics of Westeros to a more existential plane. I can never be Lord of Winterfell. I can never be Lord of anything. And the three-eyed raven. But also, Bran might not be entirely absent from this scene. Remember, there was that moment with Jon at his mother's grave, the turn, just like Ned turned at Bran's voice. There are these important memories related to Jon's life from Catelyn and Eddard. I think Bran is present here, speaking to Jon through the voices of his parents, both his biological mother and his foster parents, Ned and Catelyn, using them to help Jon discover who he really is. And of course, I guess we can never really rule out the possibility that Bran has warged 
looked into the past and become the Night King. You know, that old crazy theory that we've talked about before. And maybe the Night King is somehow like adult Bran, thousands of years old. And this icy mist means Night King Bran is actually here and the Starks are all present. But um, yeah, I'm not gonna put all my chips on that theory. This trailer ends with the reveal of the season eight premiere date, April 14th, and the marketing slogan, For the Throne. Hmm, and that brings me to my question for you guys. What do you think For the Throne really means? Is it simply a battle between warring factions for control of the Iron Throne, Lannister versus Targaryen versus Night King, or could it be a rallying cry to unite realms of men against this supernatural evil? The throne being the one symbol of the Targaryen conquest and the unity of Westeros. And another question, do you think it's possible that we could see this footage as part of the season? Comment down below with your thoughts and follow New Rockstars on Twitter at New Rockstars and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at EA Voss and subscribe to New Rockstars for Game of Thrones updates and breakdowns and some fairly far-fetched but still fun theories like how, judging from this promo, Game of Thrones final season could be half Forrest Gump and half Day After Tomorrow. Ha! Confirmed!